oil theft and bunkering still a major issue uh, here in Nigeria. And it's actually on the rise. Officials estimate uh, some 180,000 barrels a day go missing out of a total production of 2 million barrels uh, per day. Now, joining me or on the line is Patrick Delico. He's a spokesperson for Stop the Theft uh, campaign. Uh, Patrick, uh, thanks. It's thanks for joining us so much, on the sh so much for on the show today. Now, give me a take. First, give me an, an idea of what this whole Stop the Theft campaign is about. Well, the idea really is that um, if, if Nigeria is losing something like about a third or, sorry, a fourth or a fifth of its um, uh, production through theft, then uh, the indigenous people, Nigerians themselves, should get involved in trying to uh, aid government in doing its job, which is to try and stop theft. Right. And uh, Patrick, I'd love to know, what is the government doing wrong? Because oil bankering, oil theft has been a problem in Nigeria for a while now. What is the government doing wrong? What are some of your solutions uh, to solving this issue? Well, the what the government is doing is to take the military route, route which is basically to try and uh, catch the, um, uh, the, the thieves. But the, the, the problem is a lot bigger than catching a few thieves that uh, do what you call local bunkering. Local bunkering meaning that they, they steal uh, some oil and boil it and make diesel or kerosene, as the case may be. The main theft is people who steal from the pipelines into barges, then uh, move the barges to mother ships that are anchored outside our waters, and then they carry them to refineries overseas. The solutions have to do with tracking, because we know that Nigerian uh, oil has uh, characteristics that are unique. The, and if we can track this oil to the refineries, then we'll know whether or not they are stolen. The second issue is to follow the money, because a lot of uh, these um, uh, monies are paid in Europe, uh, where there are laws against using money in this kind of criminal activity. The third issue has to do with following the ships themselves, because, uh, uh, you know, Europe and various international agencies have uh, data about the movement of ships. So if we know uh, where the ships are coming from, if we know the owners of the ships, if we know the banks in which, which they are using, and also, you know, since we can track the oil, we know the refineries that they are going to, a combination of all these will make it more and more difficult. I'm not saying it's going to finish, but stop. But it's going to make it more and more difficult and make it unattractive, which is our aim. Right. I and I mean, Patrick, I mean, with the reforms going on in our oil sector right now, we know uh, there's a lot going with the petroleum industry bill, which we're waiting to be passed by the National Assembly. And that's going to change a lot uh, in Nigeria's oil and gas sector. Do you think the government has made any provision or any, any important provision or significant provision for solving this issue of oil bunkering in the PIB bill that's coming out? Well, there are no uh, important provisions that I know of in the PIB bill uh, as such. Uh, in fact, while the bill was uh, taking place, the incidence of oil theft was a lot lower. That is, the, this bill has been, you know, been knocking the corridors for the past four, five, six years. At that point, uh, oil theft was uh, rather small. But right now, it's a major industry. It's a major uh, issue. And uh, the government uh, is doing its best. But the, 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 the simple truth is that the, the job is, uh, is bigger than, than, than the government uh, can handle. And it needs the cooperation of everybody, uh, Nigerians themselves, uh, uh, civil society, uh, international criminal organizations, uh, the financial institutions, international organizations, and the international community.
in order to drive this thing out of Nigeria. That's right. And I mean, Patrick, the International Energy Agency says uh, the country actually loses about $7 billion a year to oil theft. Now, I'd love to know, you just mentioned the fact that the government can handle this alone, the Nigerian government. Is there any hope uh, for us solving this issue anytime soon? Yes, there is. There's always hope for solving. Well, anytime uh, soon. I mean, in the next four to five years, are we going to see major oh, changes? Yeah. If we are serious, we ought to be able to have made a major dent in it. Please what the, understand what, what, what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is to say to the man who perhaps is buying oil now at uh, $20 a barrel, we push the price up by all these inspections and what have you, such that he cannot get the oil unless he wants to spend $80, $90 a barrel. Now, if you're going to spend that kind of money, you may as well go and get the thing legally. That's the point. We make the place push the threshold so that people do not find this so lucrative that uh, they continue to uh, do um, hurt the country, hurt the reputation of the oil companies, and impoverish the people from where this oil is coming from. Right. And I mean, on the state government level, uh, do you think the state governments are doing enough to stop what's going on over in the Niger Delta? They are doing their best. The state government, our constitution is rather uh, peculiar in the sense that um, uh, law and order at the first level is supposed to be with the state governments and then they're on to the federal government. But somehow or the other, the state governments have not featured in protection in the uh, in this oil sector because they've left most of it since it's actually a federal uh, issue in the hands of the military and the police. Mm. Now, both of them are stretched, and uh, they, as I keep saying, the job is beyond what the resources that, uh, that they have. 